Hi, I'm Dr. Yusuf from Cornwall, Ontario, presenting this femtolaser cataract surgery with symphony intraocular lenses uh, uh, for this nice lady. So we're starting the surgery uh, by the laser part first. Uh, I reviewed the plan and uh, the plan is in the computer. Now we're starting the uh, implant uh, to put the uh, the ring on. So uh, this ring will hold the eye open and stabilize the eye through the surgery. And uh, it's a, it's a suction ring, so it holds in place with suction. So the patient will feel a bit of pressure at that time. I'm just fitting it in, make sure that it's uh, there's nothing between the ring and the eyeball. Sometimes the lower lid can attach itself to underneath and uh, break suction. So it's very important to, to clear that up. Make sure that nothing is in uh, the, between the ring and the the eyeball. Kelly on the left side waiting for it with the uh, uh, 10 cc range of uh, saline. <laughs> so I'm improving the plan and starting the suction. Now uh, Kelly's filling the uh, LOI with uh, saline. I move the patient underneath uh, the laser. Kelly is looking at the bed, and we are raising the bed to attach the LOI to the laser machine. So there's no uh, there's no air bubbles in that area, so we'll capture and we'll lock. And uh, after that, the laser will start scanning the eye. Uh, different layers, the anterior of the cornea, posterior of the cornea, the front of the lens and the back of the lens, and the edge of the pupil and the limbus. And after that, all is approved, and uh, make sure that the, the cuts are exactly in location. Uh, I'll activate lasers to start uh, proceeding with the steps. So I'm verifying the location of the cuts and everything, and then proceeding with the laser itself. So the capsulexis is done, and then proceeds through the different steps, uh, dividing the nucleus into the quadrants. I prefer that method. It's one third for for this lady. It's a moderate nuclear cataract, plus three. So the laser is done. Now we'll release the uh, suction, the capture and the suction, and lower the bed and unlock the bed. Hmm. Then we put the bed up, lock the bed in a new look, uh, position to raise it to level to do the cataract surgery. I'm adjusting also the, uh, the oxyflex, which is the tube coming out of the microscope. It holds the uh, the drapes away from the patient's face. Yeah. Lynn is scrubbing the eye, cleaning up with betadine. Betadine eye drops have been put before the surgery. And this is just cleaning the skin around the eye. Frank is preparing the table. This is a single cataract. I uh, routinely do the bilateral simultaneous cataracts, but uh, this was uh, just a single cataract. So we're getting ready with the FACO, the fake machine is set up. Uh, well, this is a laser bed, so you can see that there's a joystick on top of the bed. It's different than a regular surgical bed. So in this case, I put the, uh, the drapes to be ice upside down. So uh, the larger part is covering the joystick area, uh, making a sterile area. So I asked the patient to look down to the feet and, and lift the upper lid up uh, to expose the eye. That's why the, dra the drape will set up well and cover the lashes area well and then I'll cut the uh, upside and center and put the speculum
that keeps the eye open throughout the surface. So the recording here is done with 3, uh, 360 Max with the GoPro attached to the, the ceiling light. And there's a Hero 8 GoPro attached to the microscope. And there's the microscope uh, view with the built-in video camera of the microscope. I use the block to move the microscope and start the camera, adjust it. So the lower left view is the microscope uh, uh, view. And you have this the GoPro view now, up to the left. Oh, so this is the best thing to do. So the nice thing about the 360 Max, you can actually re-edit the video after and take different uh, shots. Now I'm reviewing the lens. The lens here is a Symphony lens uh, from Johnson & Johnson. The Symphony lens is the one that gives you, it's a, what you call extended depth of focus lens. So it gives you distance, intermediate and uh, near vision. Uh, at the same time, the rings on the lens is the one gives you the the depth, but at the same time can give you a slight uh, night vision problems. Uh, at least at the beginning, it gets better as time passes. The uh, uh, but these uh, night vision halos and glare uh, they usually improve with time, and a lot of patients they stop reporting them. But some patients still do you see see them, so I warn all the patients about uh, that possibility. Probably, if you're a truck driver, I won't give you that kind of lens uh, implant. The, so the best thing to do. Today. Excellent. So, uh, I started this with the cataract surgery already. Uh, I did the freezing, injected uh, the viscoelastic, the endocoat to cover the cornea front and back. And then I'm doing the hydro section, hydro delineation. And here we have to make sure that we cover uh, with the hydro delineation the whole uh, nucleus because the nucleus is divided into six quadrants, six uh, segments. And you have to make sure that you hydro sect every single one of them. I'm starting the FACO. Now the uh, division of the nucleus, it's already divided, but uh, you don't chop the regular way because it's already chopped. So you actually pull the segments apart rather than chopping them and remove the, the uh, one the thirds uh, one by one. You can see it's very easy. The laser did the part of the job for you. Uh, the last quadrant and then the epinucleus removal. Now the FACO is done, uh, I'll go in with the J cannula. So I, I look for a defect in the, uh, the cortical material and start uh, uh, flushing the material out through the wound. Uh, this design of J-Canio, I did a modification on the J-Canio to make, make it wider. And uh, flushing uh, the, the BSS a little bit more at an angle at, along the shaft rather than uh, parallel to the shaft. This will give you more access to material that's a little bit further out. I'm filling the bag with Helon to prepare for the lens implantation. Very, very well. This lens, uh, the Symphony comes not a pre-folded one, and I wish they will become uh, pre-loaded in the future, so I have to fold that lens. That's what I'm doing at this stage. 
So the lens has the optic and two legs, which call haptics. We fold them into the injector, which is a cartridge that folds the lens. So the lens will go in through this small incision. and opens inside. So the lens is in. So that was the lens going in. Oh and it's God. unfolded. Now I'm going to remove the hmm. viscoelastic we used through the surgery the and remove yeah, the any coarse material that's yeah. left behind. Are you seeing the lens? Uh, I'm using the lens it itself like? as a shield to protect Blue? the capsule okay. from being captured uh -huh. by the it's irrigation blue, aspiration that's tip. Okay. <laughs> the colors that avoids are the complication of the PC the tear, mm -hmm. so the color which is a major complication of, of white is white. People see it as pink and blue and different colors. Yeah. So I position the, the lens uh, on a regular basis on horizontally that avoids some of the shadowing on the side supposed to at least I'm using a uh, balanced salt solution now to fill the chamber clear up more and flush behind the lens and I'm cleaning all of the indoor coat that was covering the lens they covering the cornea in the front to clear the vision because we do the testing of the vision immediately after so uh, if there's some viscoelastic left on on the cornea will blur the vision i'm injecting hydrosecting and now i'm uh, hyd uh, hydrating the wound using the moxifloxacin intracornea injection and intracameral injection of the moxifloxacin uh, to prevent inflammitis and i inject around the lens too and flush the surface of the eye with the uh, moxifloxacin and I also do the dropless injection. Okay. So it's a trimoxy uh, injected into the subconjunctival space to avoid uh, blurring the vision by the uh, trimcinolone being in the vitreous cavity that's uh, done on routine basis and dropless uh, method. So this method is easier uh, to avoid this fogging because I frequently do bilateral surgeries. So if I fog the vision, it's gonna be bilaterally fogged. And you don't need to inject it into the vitreous cavity. Uh, doing it uh, in the subconjunctival nice. space will do the same trick, and, uh, same effect, and can be reversible. So if the pressure went up uh, because of the steroid, you can actually remove it from the conjunctival space easily uh, after surgery if needed. Thank you very much for watching.